remember talking to one director, he said, you know, on your first day, remember anybody can put the camera down once. He said, but you gotta figure out where you're gonna put your second shot so that you look like you know what the hell you're doing. I knew we were gonna shoot this scene, and so I said, okay, we're gonna kinda go this way and and um, set up the dolly track, and, and all of a sudden, boom, it started happening. The grip started setting up the dolly track. The DP, Dean Simler, said, you know, do it right. And I was a stage manager, so I used to do that kind of stuff. And so suddenly it started to go up. I was a little cocky, you know. I walked off and went, wow, this is pretty good. You say put it here, they put it there. No wonder everybody thinks they can do it, huh? Yeah. <laughs> I came back and now they had the camera up and the actor started to walk through. And the shot wasn't right. Every time I looked at it, it just didn't feel right. And I thought, oh my God, this is my first shot and everybody's looking at me and this doesn't feel right. Cut. Cut. Come on. We had to do it anyway. I thought, what am I going to do here? I'm, I not only don't even get to put the camera at the second spot of the day to show everybody I know what I'm doing, I've got the camera in the wrong place. And I debated about it. I debated about, well, just go with it. What the hell? And something in me snapped and said, you're directing. And I said, this isn't right. I'm wrong. I'm sorry, you guys. Let's have it run the other way. And everybody, like, looked at me for a second. And then they did it. And that... Two moments let me think that I could do this. That moment, and then two nights later when we saw the dailies of that day, I looked at it and I go, this looks like a movie. So you see that his heart's breaking. It, it makes you feel ashamed. Because this guy's saying he's proud of you, and you know that there's no reason to be proud of you. From day one, I knew that Kevin was the right guy that there was no question from day one he was the director. I mean, not only the director, but a great director. I had no question. So it wasn't, I didn't go through two weeks and three weeks and all of a sudden he began to evolve and become something. It was immediate. I mean, when I saw him set shots, talk to actors, run down the hill, or do another take, look at dailies, talk to him, you know, I knew he was on. I had a doubt prior to it. I don't know until all of a sudden he, he starts delivering. But after day one, I said, all right, it's going to be a lot of days and it's going to be tough work. But I thought from the beginning, this guy's actually got it. you got to roll this way, okay? okay yeah. you got to get this way. And this turns into the crawl. Robert, Robert. This turns into the crawl, but and then it turns oh. into the knee. He always encouraged the behavior to be as completely honest and in the moment as possible. There was never an assumption, oh, an Indian woman back then wouldn't do that. It was never that, and I, I really appreciate it, because you can play modesty without acting at, you know, being repressed. Why are you not married? I'm sorry. I have to go. Kevin was very clear as a director, particularly about Stance with the Fist, he had very specific ideas about her, which I totally appreciate because it, it gave me some, some boundaries as well as some wide open spaces. But to play that relationship with him when he was also directing was actually kind of sweet because for me, it allowed me to watch him be this, you know, really fantastic leader. And that fit perfectly well with the soldier that I was supposed to be admiring. <laughs> We'll go again, Roddy, right. right. that's, the, that's the exact angle. Start with those eyes right there, okay, those eyes. Yeah. When I say action, not half a beat there. Eight up. And not real quick with the eyes, just a little bit of a, just a little bit of a look around, a little bit slower. It's a little bit slower, it's, and you, 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 feel the, you, you feel it bubbling up in you. You look around, you see the argument going awry. Okay, here we go. <laughs> it was an inspiration to everybody in the cast and crew to, uh, you know, just forge ahead. We'll follow you anywhere. So then at the end of this thing, where he says, I'll go, you'll go, and kicking where to go, it's, it's more quiet than the last one. It's just more like, okay, okay. There's been a couple times where somebody flubbed a line and okay. just say, just pick it up. You know? So it was, it was that. It wasn't, okay, let's start over again. It was just, just pick it up. Talk about the Yeah, he can what Kevin really did in Dances with Wolves as a big time movie actor that I thought was truly great is that he gave himself up for the story. 
He made himself a human maypole around which all the action was revolving. Kevin had his wonderful moments, but he was very, very generous with the story and his fellow actors, inviting them in to inhabit this story fully. And I think it has a great deal to do with the success of the movie. And when you see him look for help, it's like he's sissy. He did that. <laughs> She's been handling him for years. <laughs> That's right, Floyd. <laughs> That's right. Kevin, I thought, was great as a director because of his experience as an actor, you know, and he knows what you're going through and he knows how to explain things to you to communicate what it is that he needs as a director. So it was great. It was just smooth, you know. Is Gene lined up with uh, Tim? Or are we uh, just on his start mark, I think I had Tim pretty much clean there. Let's put Tim on his start mark. He was generally very clear. He knew exactly what he wanted. He had a vision, he knew shots. He may or may not have known what lens to shoot them on, and you know, maybe I didn't know what lens to shoot them on at that stage, and a lot of the time it was trial and error. Now, what do you think, go tighter? I'd, pu I'd punch in 100, yeah. Yeah, definitely, go, go tighter. We put lenses on the camera, and we moved the camera around until it looked exactly right. Good, Chooch, good, Chooch, get out, Chooch, get out. I'd come back after the take with Kevin at the monitor, and we'd look, and Jim was generally there as well, and they'd discuss the shot, and Kevin would say, I'm gonna do one more. He wouldn't say why, he'd go back and, do a variation on a performance. Okay, right away. One more. Kevin always took the time. I mean, he amazed me how he was able to balance so well directing it and acting in it. And he was never short-tempered. He always took the time, took a personal interest. I mean, I was quite in awe with it because I had never worked with a director, I don't recall, that actually did both. You got a real close-up when you're directing at him and know what to say. It's hard sometimes to take him out of the picture when he's in the character and say, Kevin, well, why don't we look over here? This might be better. I set up this whole scene over here. Why don't we go look at that? Because he's, he's so involved in the acting as well. But it's a, it's a blessing because he's so totally involved. And you're looking up. And you're looking down. Just a second. You're looking up and you're looking down. That's exactly the way to do it. When you feel that impact, it's, oh, OK? Yes. It took us 108 days to shoot it. Okay, the average movie is about 60 days at that time. So, I mean, we're out there 46 more days. That's a long time to be away from home. And this actor is directing. And so I know there was doubts flowing through everybody, but about the fourth week before we finished the film, our editor pieced some stuff together and brought it to dailies as a presentation about six minutes of film. We actually have that piece that he played for the crew, and it was it was only represented like the first 30 days of filming, not even the last 60. It says here that you've been decorated. Yes, sir. And they sent you here to be posted? Actually, sir, I'm here at my own request. Really? Why? I've always wanted to see the frontier. Do you want to see the frontier? Yes, sir. Before it's gone. When the lights came up, there were tears in the eyes of everybody in the room, especially the Native Americans, because no one had really known what they were working on. And he had just cut together six minutes of footage. And it was what the crew saw before anybody anywhere, any studio anywhere had seen anything. I kind of follow my own heart about how I feel about things, and no one can ever take that night away from me, whether the picture went on to be successful or not. The, the very last shot that we shot was Kevin riding to tell the tribe that the buffalo were coming. It's kind of a night shot, and he, it's like ghostly. He kind of rides out on the horse in the middle of the prairie. That was the last thing we shot. And it was so cold that we were all hiding in vans. We couldn't even get out. And he was out there still with his thing, you know, no coat. Didn't even face him. That's <laughs> <laughs> Look at the cast. Shot of the cast. I'm gonna be as hard on the studios as I was on these people. If you're gonna be a bully, you gotta be a bully to everybody. All right! When we wrapped and we called it a day, I just took Kevin on that last shot and I ran up to him and just gave him a huge hug because, and he cried too. And it was, it was, um, we knew uh, we had spent it all. Right there. Did you all make this? 
Did you kids all make this? Yeah. Mm. You guys have been great in this movie, and I hope, I hope that you see yourself in this movie, and I hope you remember it, and I hope it's as good as you want it to be. Yes. Dance is clearly in both the writing of it and Kevin's conceptual of the film was the buffalo hunt. So we spent more time thinking about how do you do that? How is that arranged? I came across a lot of beautiful locations, but none of them had any kind of buffalo population. I finally hit the Triple U Ranch in South Dakota, and there were a little over 3,000 head there, which was, I think, the largest privately owned buffalo herd in the world. So I talked to uh, Roy Houck, who was the former lieutenant governor of the state of South Dakota, and I explained to him what it was we intended to do with the buffalo. And his grin just was from ear to ear, and he said, man, if you can do that, I'd like to see it. Hello from Houck's Movie Buffalo Ranch. You're welcome. Hundreds of horses, hundreds of extras. Gandhi of the Plains right here. Kevin loved to tell the stories about about how buffalo were in the West at, at one time, about stopping trains for two days and how big they used to be and, and all that. And, and I think Kevin had a real uh, affinity for buffalo. Here, rolling and action, and I'll wave and go. But if you see me going like this, that means you, you have to go. You'll, you'll tell that I'm really animated. If they start to charge, and we're just going to have to go with them. I had meetings with Kevin talking about the stunts and the action. He wanted to use Native Americans as stuntmen. He didn't want to do the status quo, which they'd always done, which is bring Hollywood stuntmen out and paint them down. And luckily, we found some bull riders and some rodeo guys that were Native Americans. So I knew they were rough and tumble. And when it came time to do the buffalo hunt, these guys had practiced. And so not only could they shoot their tipped arrows at the buffalo, they could reload while going full blast, which is not easy, and fire several arrows. They got very good at it. I mean, you know, it's like they got the chance to go back and do what their ancestors did. And they took it very serious. We hope they're going to be in here. We think they're going to take the line of that little mini, see that little tiny little thing down yeah. here? They, we think they're going to be in around about there, good. which puts us back a bit too yeah. far here. I think we'd want to all push down. You OK? Here they come, Phil! <laughs> oh, well, well, that's, yeah. why we've got, that's why we've got these cones here. Yeah, that's good. <laughs> they hate orange cones. They hate orange cones. Uh, orange yeah. cones. They'll, They'll be, be like fist. anything to They'll avoid be, orange cones. Fred, cone. pull it back, back, 10 feet, 12 feet, 2 feet. Ah! You see the whites of their eyes, we're in trouble. Yeah, no. If you see their tails up, <laughs> that's and right. their heads down. Yeah, oh, 2,000 right. tails. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> We really kind of had a blank chalkboard. We shot that sequence in like about five days. And I think if somebody told us that we only had five days, we, we wouldn't have thought we could do it. But we said, well, this is what we're going to do. So everybody's got to be really looking over at me. And if, when I wave, that's when you guys will go. Now, don't get yourselves in, in positions that you can't get out of. I mean, it's pretty, pretty scary. But I don't need for you to get too far in front of the buffalo. Basically, we're trying to push them towards that camera and up to our right, okay? We're not trying to have them go that way, so you realize that this crest, if you're on that crest, maybe they'll see you and they'll they'll continue to bend that way. Buffalo, we're five minutes away. Everybody get two cameras. Copy that. Right up to the point where they were about to roll cameras, we still didn't know if I was going to do it or if Kevin was going to do it. And just before they crested over the rise, Kevin said, I'm going to do it. So he jumped on his horse, and he got up on top of the hill, and he came down into the shot. All of a sudden, out of nowhere, one of the Indians' horses ran off and uh, ran right in the back of Kevin's horse. Kevin didn't see it coming. That was a little tense. You know, I was down, and I, when I realized I wasn't really hurt, you know, and I could see the buffalo coming, and I, I looked off to Norman Hal, and I just waved him in, and I thought, man, you know, and this was a low-budget movie. I go, there goes our herd. I thought, we're gonna lose this shot. I got on the horse, he ran out, and we took off, and we got ended up with a couple shots that made the movie. 
But when you got it all riding on the line, you don't sit there and cry. You just kind of get up and you go. I think we had nine cameras on it. I know I was on a crane, and there's a classic shot that's used in all the trailers. They use it at the Academy Awards. It's Kevin riding at a gallop, coming up over the rise with a buffalo behind him. And uh, I was on the crane, I did that shot. We had to make sure we had several cameras on him, at least to see that Kevin was in there amongst them. And he said he wanted to do it because it hadn't been done for 100 years. Man hadn't written in a buffalo hunt, and he wanted to be part of that. He didn't want to be left out of it. What you see is, for me, one of the most magnificent stunts or work by an actor in, a, in an action film. Because this guy is riding this horse in the middle of 2,000 pound animals. God knows which way they're going to go. A million holes and a horse could go down and just snap an ankle and fly. But nothing happened to anybody. Uh, six, seven days later, the dust clears and we have a magnificent scene. Get a clouds of dust and figures moving in and out of the dust. It was yep. incredible stuff. Look at Phil. That's a real buffalo warrier right there. Look at your faces. Will someone bring mine back? I lost my hat. Watch, you're going to come from the left. Oh, oh, yes, geez. Boy, look at him knock that horse over on the top. He was. There's a lot of physicality to the movie. I mean, there really is, whether it's Kevin just running into a beam and knocking himself out, to the hand-to-hand -hand combat, to leaping on horses. I mean, it's, it's chock full of it. So Norman had his hands full. All right. That's good. That's good. Oh, big Noir. All right. <laughs> nice one, Norman. Thank are you. you. Are you going to do it over No, work? one time. No. I like that. Action. It was easy working with Kevin as a director because if the actor wants to do a stunt and the director doesn't want him to do it, he doesn't do it. But Kevin, when he wanted to do a stunt, he's also the director. So, you know, was, that was what we were going to do. We were going to do it the way, you know, Kevin wanted to do it. And he wanted to do everything. So I would rehearse it, try to get all the bugs worked out of it, and then he would jump in there and do it. We knew exactly what we were going to do when we got to the sets. Cut. What is it, sir? Looks like a suicide. The only thing that was a big surprise was in the Civil War sequence when Kevin was, was riding the buckskin out there across the pasture. Rifle were firing, and, and they were all missing him. And then he threw his arms up in the air and took his hands off the reins. That wasn't talked about at all. And I was standing by the fence. It was, it was all in a big pasture, so there was fences all the way around it. And he had his hands and his eyes closed just like this, and he got closer and closer to that fence. And I said, Gavin, Gavin, look up, look up. And he finally opened his eyes and he picked that horse up. That was one of the things that was very spontaneous and surprising. I kind of just knew what I wanted to do, and I didn't, I didn't think of it as a burden you know, as an extra thing. The producing was actually harder to make real critical decisions about what I was actually trying to do artistically. 